Good afternoon, all. I will be talking about the local structure study of hafnium dopin in JR7 N10 and HR7 N10 binary alloys. The outline of my talk is first I will tell about the motivation of this work and the time differential product angular correlation studies in these uh, binary alloys, and uh, uh, then the EFG calculation in these alloys, and finally I will, I will compare the results obtained in these binary alloys, and uh, uh, finally I will conclude. So uh, the motivation behind this work is that uh, some of the zirconium nickel binary alloys like ZRI10I21, ZRI7N10, etc., they are used as negative electrode in nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries uh, due to their superior uh, hydrogen absorption reabsorption properties. And uh, <coughs> these uh, we have carried out uh, the PSC study in HF7N10. Actually, uh, uh, the uh, structural properties of HF7N10 is not uh, uh, well known. So it, it has been predicted that it is isostructural to ZRI7N10. So we have carried out the PSC measurement in both these compounds uh, to get the phase components, electric field gradients and the st to study the temperature dependence of electric field gradients. And the DFT calculation have been carried out to uh, get the value of EFG theoretically and compare with the, the uh, experimental values and to know the site occupation of hafnium dopants in the different crystallographic positions. And, uh, uh, to, uh, and we have also compared the EFG values of these two components. So uh, the basic principle of PSC technique is uh, <coughs> Okay, so uh, uh, we have used uh, 181 hafnium probe isotope. So uh, in the PSC, uh, uh, the probe, uh, probe actually is uh, introduced into the um, uh, sample, and it essentially emits two coincident gamma rays passing through an intermediate level of lifetime of 10.8 nanosecond. And uh, uh, when this uh, <coughs> probe isotope is introduced into the material, which has an electric field gradient or magnetic hyperfine field, and uh, then the nuclear moments interact with these hyperfine fields, and uh, we see a uh, precision of, uh, of angular correlation, and the angular correlation gets perturbed and uh, the perturbation factor is uh, written as like uh, uh, by this formula where this uh, omega i are the transition frequencies between uh, the uh, the in, uh, the different sub levels of the intermediate state uh, intermediate states and uh, the delta is the uh, distribu frequency distribution width and the uh, time resolution is given by the tower and if there are um, uh, more than one phases then the total perturbation function is given by this sum formula so uh, this is the uh, uh, PSC setup of our. Uh, um, uh, P this is the PSC spectrometer. We have used four uh, 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 signalization detectors. So um, D1 and D2 are the LAVR3 serial drop detectors, and D3 and D4 are the BF2 scintillation detectors. The uh, the geometrical uh, the geometry and the sizes are there. So. We have built uh, four uh, coincidences: two at 90 degree and two, one, uh, two at 180 degree. And uh, we uh, uh, and uh, this is a slow fast coincidence circuit. And we obtained the uh, for six 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 picosecond of uh, time resolution at hafnium energies using uh, sodium annihilation gamma rays. And at sodium uh, um, uh, window selection uh, with sodium source, the time resolution is 510 picosecond. So uh, this is the uh, <coughs> this is the uh, energy spectrum of 181 hafnium uh, uh, for LBR3 serial drop detector, and uh, the, in the BF2 the energy spectrum looks like uh, looks like this. So we uh, uh, so we used this 133 as the start and the 482 as the stop uh, uh, signal, and. Uh, <coughs> And the time resolution at CZM energies uh, for LBR3 is 4% and for BF2 is 14%. And uh, uh, the coincident time date spectrum at uh, 90 degree and uh, 180 degree for a uh, 7 and 10 is shown here. So if there is no perturbation, then there will be a, a simple exponential decay. But as there is a perturbation, so we see the oscillations or modulations in the time coincident time date spectrum. So. <coughs> okay. So this is the uh, XRD and uh, XRD studies in uh, 7 and 10 So. We have prepared the sample ZR7 and I10 uh, in conventional uh, argon arc furnace, and uh, we found uh, three different phases: so ZR8 and ZR7 and I10, ZR2 and I7, and ZR8 and I21. And, and uh, from the same uh, selectron radio electron refraction measurements, also we found uh, the uh, different H scale values for uh, these three phases: ZR7 and I10, ZR2 and I7, and ZR8 and I21. And uh, this is the PSC spectrum of ZR7 and I10 at room temperature. So, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I have shown uh, the the left panel is the time spectrum and the right panel is the uh, Fourier cosine transform. So, uh, uh, I have shown the contribution uh, in PSC also. We have found these three phases, where the ZR2 and I7 is nearly 38 percent, and uh, ZR7 and I10 is nearly 25 percent, and ZR8 and I21 is a very minor component uh, and appears to be nearly 11 percent. So, I have shown the contribution of different, uh, different three three different phases uh, in both time spectrum and Fourier spectrum and I have compared uh, what are the uh, 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 the phase components observed in these is uh, uh, characterization techniques. So uh, in all these, uh, from all these techniques we have found all these three phases. 
Oh, this is the temperature dependent uh, PSC spectrum. So uh, the here the set of three arrows shows the uh, um, the transition frequencies for a particular phase. And uh, uh, up to 773K, we have found ZR297, ZR in both the three phases. And after uh, 773K, the ZR8 and I21 component disappears. But when we uh, remeasure uh, the PSC at, at room temperature after measurement at uh, 1073K, the component ZR8 and I21 again reappeared. Now this uh, um, why this uh, other secondary phases came. So uh, the uh, ZR2 Ni7 actually a uh, is a congruently melting phase. So it is first solidified it, uh, from the liquid and uh, it reacts with the remaining liquid to form uh, pretactically uh, the ZR8 Ni21 at 14553K and the uh, remaining liquid eutectically decomposes to ZR7 Ni10 and ZR8 Ni21. And ZR2 Ni7 was found to be predominant in the entire temperature range. Uh, so I have plotted the uh, the um, uh, dependence of quadruple frequency with temperature. So <coughs> it is found that the temperature uh, electric field gradient or omega Q uh, uh, depends on. Uh, uh, temperature and uh, um, it can be uh, explained through the Debye model of lattice vibration and uh, in general in metal or intermetallic samples linear or t power 3 half temperature dependence uh, is found. So in uh, in this sample we have found linear temperature dependence for ZR2 Ni7 and ZR7 Ni10 phase and uh, the omega the, uh, the slope value is uh, 3 into 10 power minus 4 Kelvin inverse for ZR7 Ni10 and the, the eta value uh, slowly increases with temperature for ZR7 Ni10. So uh, uh, in HF7 and I10, uh, the <coughs> XID study shows uh, that the, um, there are uh, uh, HF7 and I10, beta HF and I3, and HF8 and I21. And uh, um, uh, in the TEM studies also, we have found this beta HF and I3 and uh, HF8 and I21. But I didn't, uh, couldn't identify the HF7 and I10 phase due to the lack of database. There is the uh, HKL uh, versus the interplanar spacing formula. Uh, it is actually a uh, profile fitting, but not a read fit. So we only use the uh, same space group for the uh, HF7 and I10 as uh, obtained for J ZR7 and I10. So <coughs> this, is, this is the PSC spectrum of uh, HF7 and I10 at room temperature. Now here, uh, here we found uh, uh, beta HF and I3 and HF7 and I10. Now beta HF and I3 uh, is uh, found to be predominant in this sample like 62% and uh, HF7 and I10 was found to be a minor phase 22% and I have uh, uh, shown the decomposition of, uh, of these two phases. But we did not uh, found any, uh, we did not find any uh, HF8 and I21 phase probably due to large damping factor. Uh, um, so I have compared the. Uh, different phase components that have been found from different phase, phase uh, different characterization techniques. So uh, this is the temperature dependence uh, spectrum of HF7 and I10. Uh, so here we, uh, uh, unlike ZR7 uh, and I10 sample, we didn't find any, any type of uh, phase transition. Or uh, so in the in the uh, so as the temperature is increased, the HF7 and I10 fraction was uh, increased as a expense of uh, beta HF and I3. Actually, the beta HF and I3 is a low temperature phase and uh, uh, it is stable below uh, 1473K. And uh, both this HF and I3 and uh, HF7 and I10 is formed peritectically. Uh, from the phase diagram, we can and uh, get to know that. <coughs> and uh, when we uh, uh, remeasured the uh, remeasured the same spectrum at room temperature after measurement at 1073K, it is found that the uh, the same uh, the side fractions uh, was found to be reversibly changed to initial fractions. Uh, so this is the quadruple frequency uh, temperature dependence of quadruple frequency for these two phases. Here we found also uh, similar linear temperature dependence for these two phases, and alpha value for this uh, HF7 and I10 is 2 into 10 power minus 4 Kelvin inverse. Okay, so. <coughs> So we have carried out the uh, uh, electric field gradient theoretical electric field gradient calculation at a tantalum impurity position uh, using Win2K code, where the uh, it is based on the all electron full potential uh, linearized augmented plane wave method. And uh, here uh, in both ZR7 and I10 and HF7 and I10, there are uh, four non-equivalent crystallographic positions of zirconium and hafnium. And uh, um, here I have uh, I have plotted the the measured value and the calculated value for all these ZR7 and I10 and HF7 and I10. Now. Uh, uh, for only uh, zirconium 3 or hafnium 3 positions, we found that the, the experimental value matches uh, well with the theoretical values. 
Uh, now I have compared the results of, uh, obtained in JR7 and I10 and HF7 and I10. So the electric field gradients in uh, both these samples were found to be uh, quite uh, similar and uh, the uh, in both these samples the electric field gradient uh, decreases linearly with temperature and uh, in JR7 and I10 these JR2 and I7, JR7 and I10 and JR8 and I21 were found where in HF7 and I10 beta HF and I3 and HF7 and I10 were found and uh, it, uh, both these phases were found to be stable up to 1073K and it was uh, found that the hapnium prefers JR3 and HF3 positions in these samples and the, uh, this is the temperature uh, dependence of EFG in these uh, uh, HF7 and I10 and uh, JR7 and I10 phase. So finally, I conclude uh, ja, uh, in both JR7 and I10 and HF7 and I10, we found multiple phases and uh, JR2 and I7 was found to be predominant in JR7 uh, and I10 and beta HF and I3 was found to be dominant in uh, HF7 and I10 and uh, we found similar uh, quadruple frequency and SMT parameter which says the, uh, their isos about the isostructurality of these two phases and the PSC results were found to be, uh, um, PSC results of EFG and ETA for both these phases were found to be um, in close agreement with the EFG calculated uh, from DFT. Thank you for your question.